Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for visiting my channel, Just a Guy Who Likes Math. Today I'm going to prove the proposition, uh, let a, q, b, and r belonging to integers such that a equals q, b plus r, uh, then the greatest common divisor of a and b equals the greatest common divisor of b and r. Now this, uh, you can obviously, uh, you obviously know that this is like the quotient remainder kind of equation. Um, so yes, we have to prove this. Uh, we could actually, before we start off, assume um, a times b does not equal zero, which actually means a does not equal zero and b does not equal zero. Because if this is the case, then this whole thing becomes moot point. Um, it's fair to assume this. Um, by the way, this actually is very important in the Euclidean algorithm. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. So uh, let's say we have do have a integer d, which is the greatest common divisor of a and b, which means d divides a and d divides b. That's correct, right? Um, so yes, if this is the case, then uh, d has to divide any linear combination combination of a comma b. Now this is the truth. Uh, this actually just means I'm going to write down over here um, d divides any x a plus y b. Um, I'm just going to take an example real quick. Let's say 5 is the GCD of 25 and 30, right? So 5 has to divide any linear combination. Let's say 2 times uh, 25 is 50. Uh, 2 times, let's say 3 times 30 um, equals 90. So 5 divides 140, which is, you know, the truth. Uh, so yes, so D divides any linear combination. Now let's say the linear combination is actually mm, A, so it's 1, X is, uh, X in this case is 1, and minus Q, B. Um, and Y in this case is negative Q, or minus Q. Uh, we chose this number specifically because this actually equals r, right? Because if uh, the qb comes on this side, r equals a minus qb, which is actually what we have here. So we know d divides r, but this just proves that d is a common multiple. I'm sorry, a common divisor of r. We don't know if it's, um, uh, we, yeah, we just know that. So we have over here, um, d divides r, and then we know d divides b. So this just means there is there exists d that divides r and b, but we don't know that we still don't know that D is the greatest common divisor of B and R. But uh, yeah, this is a start. Um, what we do next is this. We must show that D is the GCD of B and R. Um, it actually suffices, I'm just gonna write it down. It suffices to take another common divisor of B and R, let's say C, so C divides B and C divides R. And we must prove C is less than equal, uh, yeah, less than or equal to D, right? So we have C divides B and C divides R. So again, C divides any linear combination of B and R. So in this case, we'll take C divides QB plus R. In this case, X equals Q, uh, Y equals one is you know from the previous page so yeah and this actually we took this you know for a specific reason because this equals a right because a equals qb plus r so we have c divides a and c divides b uh, so c is a common divisor is a common divisor of a and b in the beginning, we actually had taken D is the greatest common divisor of A and B, right? So we already know, so C divides A and B. D is the greatest common divisor of A and B. So C has to be less than or equal to D, right? And which is actually what we set out to prove, uh, prove that C is less than or equal to D. Therefore, um, we have that D has to be Whoops, I'm not showing you. So D has to be the GCD of B and R. Uh, I hope all this made sense. Uh, this is actually very important, the uh, Euclidean algorithm, which I'm going to show next time. Um, and yeah, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Uh, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. But yeah, until next time, peace out.